Hello and welcome to this tutorial on a life cycle approach to land development. In this tutorial, the slides will advance after the narration is finished. This tutorial is a presentation on the seven cyclical phases of the land development process, including the purpose of each phase. The land development process encompasses a broad array of activities, from refinishing a basement, building a new home, to building a high-rise apartment or a commercial building, and much more. The process involves comprehensive reviews by numerous agencies and could involve many steps before a project is approved. Every project is unique and subject to its own set of requirements depending on the location and complexities of the project. Land development projects require compliance with specific regulations. These regulations are in place to provide an invisible web of protection around the structures and neighborhoods in the community. It's all about community health, safety, and welfare, as well as protecting the natural resources. As shown here, the land development life cycle is described in seven phases. What do you notice about this flowchart? Yes, it's a cyclical process associated with development on any piece of real property. Very briefly, I'll explain the seven phases and further details of each phase are explained throughout this presentation. At the concept phase, the project starts as an idea. Here, the project team establishes a preliminary framework for the very generalized overall layout of the project. At the planning and zoning review phase, the project team determines the allowable types of land uses and building restrictions for the project. During the design phase, the plans, details, and specifications necessary for construction of the building and site are created. The review process and permitting phase is a regulatory review of the design plans and specifications to ensure code compliance and to secure the appropriate permits. Next is the construction and inspection phase. As the building and site are being built, inspections by various municipal and state agencies are conducted to ensure compliance with code and to ensure construction follows the approved plans. Code compliance is needed for the health, safety, and welfare of immediate and future occupants. The occupancy phase is a continuation of inspections to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of the public after the building is occupied. The next phase is renewal. As the building and site's usefulness becomes obsolete, there becomes a need to redevelop or repurpose the site for economic purposes and possibly for community interests. After the renewal phase, the life cycle process begins again with the concept phase. In looking at land development as a life cycle, we begin with the concept phase. Imagine you are a property owner or a developer with a parcel of land that currently has no improvements. The concept phase can be thought of as that stage of the development cycle when an idea to improve the property usually for the purpose of increasing its value, begins to take shape. This phase of the development cycle is focused primarily on the desires of the developer or property owner and how their vision fits into the regulatory requirements. From the perspective of local government, the role of local officials and regulatory authorities is largely to advise. Depending on the type of development, the developer or property owner may seek readily available information to assess whether their vision of the development is even feasible or profitable. This information, such as environmental issues, land use, legal and physical site constraints, is typically available on the local government's website or in documents at the local government offices. At this stage, owners and developers will often engage in a feasibility study to determine whether their plans would represent a profitable undertaking or not. When the owner or developer feels comfortable, there are no deal killer costs and the risk of moving forward with a project is manageable, they will begin preparing documents and drawings for the next phase. Of course, each municipality has its own structure of agencies for municipal services, such as Department of Public Works, Environmental Services, Planning and Zoning, sewer and water, transportation, and even possibly a centralized call-in number to ask questions. During the concept phase, these departments and agencies can answer questions and direct you to sources of information 
for the development project. At this phase, the development team is looking for readily available information, such as locality maps, to determine the opportunities and constraints of the site. Other resource documents include the comprehensive plan, the zoning ordinance, and the subdivision ordinance. The next phase in the development life cycle is the planning and zoning review. This phase ensures your project is compatible with surrounding land uses, preserves natural and historic resources, includes improvements with local public infrastructure, and promotes economic development as typically described in the long-range strategic plan of the municipality, such as the comprehensive plan. The purpose of zoning is to promote the orderly development of land through allowable density and intensity, to regulate lot, parcel, and building elements, and protect the health, safety, and welfare of citizens. For example, zoning helps to ensure that industrial uses are not placed immediately adjacent to low-density residential uses. Zoning is the means of implementing the comprehensive plan. The zoning ordinance is law, whereas the comprehensive plan is a guidance document. The developer has to determine if the proposed land use is consistent with the provisions of the comprehensive plan and then determine whether the land can be developed through entitlement or by right according to the zoning ordinance. If the zoning ordinance does not allow the proposed land use for the existing zoning district, there may be an opportunity to rezone the land to a zoning district that allows the proposed land use. The rezoning process consists of a number of steps and may take months before the rezoning is approved. Any rezoning proposal is subject to a detailed review and analysis by staff and public hearings before the governing bodies. Knowing what can and cannot be done with a piece of property in the context of zoning regulations is essential when determining the feasibility of a project. Absent the need for rezoning action, land development may occur by right meaning the proposed development use is consistent with the existing zoning district. Localities typically have some form of a planning, zoning, and development department. This department is the primary resource for information during this phase, and the comprehensive plan and zoning ordinance are the primary resource documents, particularly if the project goes through the public hearing process. The public hearing process is required for a rezoning, special exception or special permit. The public hearing allows residents to stand before the governing body and express their opinion about the project and voice their concerns. Planning and zoning staff will also help navigate the development team through this public hearing process. If the project is strongly opposed by many citizens, a district supervisor or town council member may also get involved and the development team will need to meet with them to try to resolve the citizen issues. The development team usually engages a land use attorney and land planner as a primary resource for this phase. Phase three of the land development process is the design phase. After the planning and zoning review and with the rezoning approval in hand, the applicant starts the design phase, which results and a site design package that includes a set of construction documents and specifications for both site and building. The design must conform to the numerous regulations and codes. Many localities have a facilities design standards manual with design guidelines and specifications that are used in this design process. This package is submitted to the municipality for review. The detailed site and building drawings and specifications shows dimensions, materials, and location of construction elements in accordance with the regulatory requirements. Good design leads to communities where people want to live and work. Construction drawings, plats, and site-related plans help ensure safety and customer satisfaction. During this phase, the municipality provides a minimum level of review of these documents to ensure code compliance but owners and developers should consider other factors in this design phase such as constructability, schedule cost, energy conservation, and sustainability. The development team is primarily involved in this phase. Very early in this phase, the developer may choose to do a more detailed feasibility analysis to determine any issues affecting the development project and then determine resolution either before preparing construction documents or perhaps designing the project to resolve these issues. 
the feasibility analysis is not submitted to the locality as part of the review and approval process. Inevitably, there will be conflicting elements in the design phase that must be balanced in order to create a viable project. The ultimate goal of the developer is to make a profit by creating residential units or commercial and retail square footage. Usually, but not always, the higher the yield, the higher the profit. However, regulations and site constraints affect the yield. Balancing these three elements is always a challenge. Collaboration and negotiation among the design team, locality staff, and citizens is imperative in order to make the project successful. The locality's land development services staff will be the primary go-to resource during this phase. Various departments cannot be involved with the actual project design, but will answer questions regarding applicable regulations, the plan review process, and securing required permits. The end result of this phase is a set of construction documents, both site and building. These plans, after the county approval, along with the appropriate permits, will be used by contractors for construction. The project team should ensure the design meets the prescribed criteria to ensure a reasonable review time. Poor plan quality results in more plan submissions for review. Phase 4. Review Processing and Permitting. To determine if your project is in compliance with construction codes, the zoning ordinance, and other municipality or state ordinances, other agency reviews may be necessary. Approval from all appropriate review agencies and departments is necessary before any construction can begin. Plans not in code compliance will result in staff comments and require the consultant to address the deficiencies and resubmit the plans. The municipality issues different types of permits for construction, such as building permits, trade permits, and land disturbance permits. Recognize that fees will be required. Site permits such as land disturbance or erosion and sediment control permit are secured before trade permits because much of the site work needs to be substantially complete before building construction begins. Some common types of site-related permits include the land disturbance permit, erosion and sediment control permit, utility permits, Department of Transportation permits, well and septic permits. Common building permits include interior alteration permits, residential addition permits, demolition permits, trade permits such as electrical and plumbing, and fire safety systems permits. During the plan review phase, both the site and building plans may need to be reviewed and approved by one agency or department before another agency can begin their review. Agencies and departments may be able to review the plans concurrently. However, comments from one agency may conflict with comments from another agency. The applicant must take an active role in coordinating with the conflicting agencies to get resolution. In most cases, permits are usually required from each reviewing department and agency. Staff involved with the plan review will be the primary resource at this phase. This may include staff from the following. Zoning review, building and site review, wastewater review, health department review, fire marshal review, and Department of Transportation review. Phase 5 of the development review process is the construction and inspection phase. With permits in hand, construction may begin. It is the permit holder's responsibility to contact the municipality when stages of construction are reached that require an inspection. Appointments days in advance are typically necessary to ensure inspectors schedule the inspection to prevent construction delays. Inspectors verify that construction elements are code compliant and construction matches the approved plans. These inspections not only protect the immediate user, but all future users of the building and site. Inspections may involve certification, observation, and testing. In addition to code compliance, inspections are also necessary to protect the environment, protect the owner's property investment, protect the broader community, and ensure compliance with state and local mandates. Inspections are required by different municipality agencies, such as 
building and trade related inspections, site related inspections, fire marshal inspections, and health department inspections. Every permit requires inspections. Inspectors verify that construction elements are code compliant and construction matches the approved plans. Inspections may involve certification, observation, and testing. The four major systems under which inspections are performed are the building inspection, electrical inspection, plumbing inspection, and the mechanical and HVAC inspection. The seven basic inspections that are required by building code for all buildings and structures are the footing, foundation systems, preparatory work prior to placement of concrete, structural members and fasteners prior to concealment, electrical, mechanical, and plumbing materials prior to concealment, energy conservation materials prior to concealment, then final inspection. Site inspections include erosion and sediment control, grading steepness of slopes, storm drainage, public utilities such as water and sewer, and urban forestry and tree preservation. Every permit requires a final inspection. The objective is to obtain a certificate of occupancy, sometimes referred to as an occupancy permit. This occurs after all final inspections are approved. The certificate of occupancy allows the end user to legally occupy the building. As construction proceeds, inspections of both the site elements and the building elements are performed by municipal inspectors. The inspectors reference the building codes, the facility standards manual, and the approved plans to ensure construction is in compliance. Discrepancies between these documents and the actual construction may be worked out in a field. If not, plan revisions may be necessary to resolve the discrepancies. Plan revisions are subject to the review process and may delay construction. Phase 6 of the development life cycle is occupancy. An occupancy permit approval is required before move-in and occupancy can occur. This occupancy permit requirement applies to both residential and non-residential buildings. Without a certificate of occupancy, as required by the local regulations, owners cannot legally occupy the space. In some jurisdictions, you may face costly legal proceedings or fines for failure to comply with this step. The building code requires a certificate of occupancy for every building or structure. After construction is complete, there are often other additional steps or inspections required for legal occupancy. Check with your local authorities to determine what inspections are required to receive final occupancy. For example, some jurisdictions require inspections for zoning, fire marshal, and health department, among others. As the building and site's usefulness becomes obsolete due to changing demographics, economic reasons, or community interests, there becomes a need to redevelop or repurpose the site. Renewal can be considered in two different concepts, the micro level and the macro level. At the micro level, the building remains and there are modifications to the exterior and interior. Micro can be anything from a tenant fit out to a deck or addition or a kitchen remodel. On the relatively smaller scale of the micro, the cycle still works. At the macro level, the building is demolished and the site is repurposed. Redevelopment and revitalization are a natural part of the development process. Following the decision for redevelopment or repurpose of the site returns us back to the concept phase and a new beginning to the land development life cycle. Resources during the renewal phase could be any office, board, or authority that might work towards promoting economic vitality and or revitalization. In smaller localities, that may simply be the town council. Other larger jurisdictions have entire offices devoted towards this goal. Documents may include the comprehensive plan, urban guideline documents, and revitalization plans. The Department of Planning, Zoning, and Development could also be a resource in this phase. This presentation is intended to provide an overview of the land development life cycle. Understand each land development project is unique. While the basics presented herein apply to any land development project, project specifics such as type of project, municipality regulations, 
and citizen attitudes will necessitate deviations from the information herein.